Hey guys, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic today. I'm going to try to keep this video a little bit shorter than the last one. Um, today we're going to be doing a comparison of the S pins for the Fold 3, the Samsung Tab S7 Plus, and the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. So for each of these two devices, the Samsung Tab S7 Plus and for the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360, the S pins come included, whereas with the Fold 3, you have to buy it separately for about 50 bucks and they make a Fold series pen exclusively for it. And you can also use a more expensive pen, which is around $99, which is the S Pen Pro, which is a USB charged Bluetooth enabled pen, which gets it a little bit more similar to what you get with the Tab S7 Plus. So out of the gate, let's talk about the similarities between the pens, just a physical size comparison and whatnot. All three of them are black. They feature a single button that activates some features. Uh, it's interesting, on the Fold 3, the button is on the flat spot, which would normally magnetically connect to your device. Whereas on the Samsung Tab S7 Plus and on the Galaxy Book Pro 360, they're both on the curved side, not on the flat side. In addition to that, the Samsung Tab S7 Plus is the only one that features Bluetooth functionality. So what that means is that this is the only one that charges. The other two pins do not require a charge. And that ch by charging it up, you get some additional features like being able to play, pause your music, skip tracks, go backward with tracks. You can also raise and lower the volume, and we'll test out those features here in a little bit. In addition to that, all three pins use Wacom EMR technology, which is basically the best in the business in regards to responsiveness and latency. And speaking of latency, all three pins feature a nine millisecond latency time, which is really good. Uh, there are new pins on the horizon that are gonna be coming out with the S22 Ultra and with the Tab S8 Ultra that are gonna get it down to two something milliseconds. Honestly, I don't know how much you're gonna fill that given that we don't have a higher refresh speed on these newer screens. They're still gonna be at 120 Hertz. So I'll, I'll be curious to see how that pans out. So without further ado, let's take a look at the physical size comparison. So let's start with the um, Fold 3 with the uh, S7 Plus, and we'll bring in the Galaxy Book here. So if we look at them from a physicality standpoint, let me get them off here to where there's some contrast. You can see that the Tab S7 Plus one, let's move the Fold a little bit off to the side so we can get this in view a little bit better. You can see that the Tab S7 Plus is a little bit longer. It's about three quarters of an inch longer. That holds true for the Galaxy Book as well. I would say the Galaxy Book one feels the thickest as well. So it's just a little bit longer. And as far as weight, the Fold 3 one is absolutely the lightest. And I would say the Tab S7 Plus and the Galaxy Book Pro one are very similar. Let's compare all three of these to actual writing pins that you would use on a day-to-day -day basis because I think that's more relative, right? It's what you're kind of used to. So we'll just take this regular Bic pin here and if we put the Fold 3 pin up to it, you will see that the Fold 3 pin is literally just like a quarter inch shorter. It's almost the same size and it's very close to being the same width, just a little bit skinnier than the regular pin. Now if we move over to the Tab S7 Plus, the Tab S7 Plus is about a half inch longer than the regular pin. I would say this, this now makes it about the same width. Um, it feels very similar to this pin in the hand. And the same is gonna hold true with the Galaxy Book Pro 360. Not quite as long, but almost there. All right. So that's the actual size comparison. So next up, let's talk about storing the S pins and, over, and how you would keep track of them, as well as magnetizing the pins. So on the Fold 3, for it, if we go to put the pin on the back of something, it's not magne magnetic at all. There's no magnetization on this pin, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so you're not gonna wanna use the Fold 3 pin in between these devices. You're gonna wanna stick with it for use with just the Fold 3, just for that reason alone. Um, that's kind of a bummer. As far as cases go, like, I'm using this, I got this off Amazon. It's a future case. It has a little sleeve right here that you can slide the pin into. It does take about a week or so to break in, but once you do, it's not so bad. You have a kickstand here. 
So this is a feasible option for the Fold 3. Something like this, there's also the Spigen case that's out there. As far as the Tab S7 Plus, you have the ability to magnetize this right on the back, and that also charges the S Pen, because like I mentioned earlier, this has Bluetooth functionality, and that does require the charge. And to do that, we just reach around the back. You'll see I'm using the keyboard, because I'm gonna demonstrate something here with the keyboard in a little bit. But I would just flip this case back right here, and it's going to magnetically stick right there, and that will initiate a charge, and it shows it on screen as well. So that's actually my favorite storage for the S Pen. Um, it gets tucked away back behind this S Pen cover. It's not going anywhere. It has protection for when I'm laying it flat against a table or my lap. What be? And it's never going to get lost. You know, this magnetically retracts and goes back into place. Makes it very convenient. All three of this is my favorite to store it. We'll go ahead and remove the S Pen and keep them out here. Now we come over here to the big boy. Let's scoot this over to the side just a little bit. This is the Galaxy Book Pro 360. This does not have Bluetooth functionality. However, this does have magnetization, just like on the Tab S7 Plus. And with this, we can put it on the back here. It can just stick on the corner. It can stick on this side. I'm not sure if it'll go on the side or not. I don't think so. We'll go anywhere else. Oh, looks like there's a little sticky part right here in the front. That's kind of nice. I didn't know that was there. Uh, it's also on the left side if you keep your wrists out of the way or just doing some content. Uh, but the main place for storing this is going to be right back here. So when I'm using this, it's fine, totally fine. But the thing is, is I, you know, I have a couple small boys. They're pretty rough around the house and stuff. So when I'm just casually using this laptop, I typically just keep my pen here in the office because I am afraid they're going to smack it off or something like that's going to happen. It's going to go flying. I'm not going to be able to find it again. One more thing to talk about the actual physical aspects of the Tim of the S pins that I forgot to mention is that when you get the S pin for free with the Tab S7 Plus and with this Galaxy Book Pro 360, you do not get any additional replacement tims, tips with it. Sorry, tips. So if you do use your S pin a lot, you may want to consider buying some additional tips for it because uh, after a, a little while, it will eventually wear out. Whereas when you buy the Fold 3 pin, the it's called the Fold Edition S Pen. You do get a pack of, uh, it's either like three or five replaceable little nubs that you can put in there. And that leads me to the last physical aspect that I can think of, and that is on the Fold 3 S Pen, it does kind of push in a little bit. If I push my finger, you hear that noise real quick? Let me put it close to my mic. So that's me pushing in on the pen. And the, the idea behind that is when you're working on the Fold 3 or writing on it, since this isn't a true glass screen like you would get on these other two devices, this is to help keep the pen from digging into your screen. Personally, I think if you're like pushing in enough to where this actual spring-loaded mechanism is taking effect, you're pushing way too hard on that screen and you're likely going to damage it anyway. All right, next up, let's talk about the main part of this video, and that really comes down to usability. You know, which one of these do I actually enjoy using the most on a day-to-day -day basis? Which one do I think provides the most functionality and is most beneficial to actually having with the device? So it's actually in order as you see it for me personally. My, the Fold 3 is my least favorite to work with. Then these two are very similar. The Tab S7 Plus is my second favorite. What's on there? Hmm followed by the Galaxy Book Pro 360. And I know that's probably an interesting conclusion for most folks, and we'll, we'll break it down a little bit, but I actually do prefer writing on this the best. The, the main reason being is the application experience, like S Notes and Pinup. I really like the extra real estate that you get. You also get the added toolbars and stuff that we're gonna show here in just a little bit. Why do I like the Fold 3 the least? The main reason, I hate to just put it out there, but it's the elephant in the room for the Fold 3, and that's the crease. The crease kind of drives me nuts when writing on it. I, it. You know, it doesn't bother me when viewing it. Like right now, I don't even notice it. Even with overhead light and stuff, it, it's not a big deal like indoors. However, when I go outdoors, I definitely see it. When that sunlight's hitting it or you got light coming in from the windows, you definitely see it. And when you're using something like this, the S Pen, you can definitely feel it. it you know, if you're in landscape like this, you're eventually going to get down to the middle of it, just like you would the middle of a piece of paper and you were writing up and down right over that crease. 
you switch to por portrait mode, you have the same thing, except now you're going side to side. You know, you're going into the crease, then out of the crease, into the crease, then out of the crease. It's not a bad experience, but for me personally, I think it pales in comparison to these other two devices. Whereas, let's say the Tab S7 Plus, I have a tempered glass screen protector on here, so I feel totally comfortable just going a mile a minute with the S Pen on here. You know, no issues at all. And I still even feel like this screen is just more robust. It's more natural feeling than writing on something that has a curve in it, like we have here on the Fold 3. So for me, the, and the other thing too is the storage. You know, I have to swap out the silicone case with this future case that I have here anytime I want to go out with the S Pen because there's nowhere to natively store it. So between the lack of storage options, the lack of Bluetooth functionality, you don't get any added benefits that you get here. Not that it's a big deal. They are kind of gimmicky, but we'll see in a minute how it kind of pays off on the tab. Uh, between that and that crease, it really just isn't the most pleasant experience for me, me personally. So this is my least favorite. So that leads us to these two devices here. And you're probably thinking, how in the heck can the experience on this two-in-one laptop be any better than this? Well, it's not really, just a little bit. The actual user experience of like filling the pen on the screen and interacting with it, it's about the same, not a big deal. They both have great palm rejection, especially on the Galaxy Book Pro 360 after you go into Windows and you turn on palm rejection and you also turn on finger writing in like S notes. You have to make sure those features are all set correctly. And once you do, they're both kind of an equal experience. A little more convenient with the tablet, with its size, and being able to just put it on your lap easier. But as you'll see here in a little bit when we demo the apps, I, I just feel like the, the desktop version of these just offers a little bit more, especially for like an artist. I can definitely see them preferring the larger screen, the larger real estate. And the 16 by 9 actually kind of helps with getting more of the toolbars and whatnot within view. So now let's take a look at the actual settings comparison. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm going to bring this into focus. So let's go ahead and talk about the features that are unique to the Tab S7 Plus, and that is a Bluetooth functionality with all the additional options that you get with this device. So to access your S Pen options, you're going to go up here to settings. All right, on your left side, and I have the text pretty big, so hopefully you guys can see it pretty good. You're going to want to scroll down to advanced, advanced features. And you'll have all your settings for quick share, labs, and whatnot. You'll also see a settings options for S Pen. You want to go ahead and click that. And this is where you're going to have all your uh, different functionalities, like your air actions, which are your Bluetooth enable options here. I have mine set to back, home, recents, smart select. And then you have all your other specific custom actions for these particular applications. In addition to that, we can do a quick create note, which means you can have a tablet off and you just hold the button and double tap the screen and that'll start up a note with even the screen on. Screen off, I should say, apology. And then you have other advanced options here. So what's really cool about the Tab S7 Plus in comparison to the other ones is the Bluetooth features that I talked about. So let's demonstrate that real quick. We'll go ahead and open up an app that uses something like this. Let's grab I know they're under a lot of fire lately, but let's open up Spotify. So if we go ahead and we pull up a like songs, let's pull up something. Here's some old school music. So we'll go ahead and pause that. I'm not trying to get a copyright strike, but with the pen in your hand, we can press the button. I guess I should get it in view. Press the button to start it, stop it. Um, we can also raise the volume, lower the volume. You can do all these different things. Go backward and forward in your tracks, skip to the next track, pause. This is really convenient if you're sitting on the couch, sitting away from your tablet because these speakers do get loud. Same holds true with YouTube videos. You can skip to the next video. You can. You know, you can uh, turn the volume up, the volume down, and just put the S Pen back in your ear. So the S Pen functionality is pretty cool with it. The other thing that's cool too, with the Galaxy Tab S7 here, the unique functionality that it has, is that you have the ability to do a press and hold on this command button. So let me get this in view. If I press and hold it, 
you see now that we have this magnifier window here. I have mine set to automatically do the magnification. So that's really cool. So if so I'm going above the screen, you'll see that it magnifies on things. So I have terrible vision, so this is really helpful, especially when I usually have the, the text a little bit smaller. I just have it up this size for you guys to be able to see it easier. But what's nice about this is if you don't put the, the pen away, we set it up on top here and just let it rest, I can now use the keyboard and it will keep the, magnif the magnifier on that we enabled with our quick access with the pin. And this won't go away until I put the pin back into its proper storage area where it charges. That'll turn it off. Or if we just go ahead and exit out of it. So you do get some unique functionality here. But now I want to show you why I still prefer the Galaxy Book Pro 360 a little bit more. So we're going to move the Fold 3 a little bit out of the way. And we're going to set both of these devices together. I'm going to show you the, a little bit of the difference between the applications and just my overall experience between the two. And then we'll come to the final conclusion of this. All right, here we have the S Notes application on both. I just hit uh, View All Notes for each one of these. And you see we have a similar user, interspa user interface between both devices. However, when I open up one of these notes, like here's the latest notes, and, and there's a cool thing too, is when you're taking a note on one device, it syncs up between all of them, you know, all three of them. So if I open up one of these, here's your interface for interacting with this note. We'll go ahead and click on it. That way we're now in edit mode. So you need, see now we have an edit toolbar at the top. And if we click on any one of these, like any one of these brush heads here, that will switch our brushes. And if we pick the colors, that will open up a color icon picker here. But you see you have to click on each one of these to get to the interface. So now let's go over to the Gal Galaxy Book Pro 360. You'll see we get a few more options as far as navigating the notes here to the left. And if we click on a note, it comes into a similar preview mode. And now when we actually go to edit the note, look what we get here. All of these right here that you see on the Tab S7 Plus are now on the right-hand side right here. And as you click each one of these, you now get different color options and menu options for each one of these options, including your uh, delete thing, all your everything you have. You get to change your colors. Pick your different settings and we go back up here to your pin. You get to pick your width, your different color palettes. We go between the layers of them. All this functionality and that's located to you because you have this wider 16 by 9 screen. I like this a lot. For like writing notes, I was doing the notes here last night for this video. I, I, I just preferred doing it on this device. So from the S Notes functionality, like, and this is what I use as a non-illustrator, non-artist, this is the application I use the most with the S Pen, and I just feel like the S Notes experience on the Galaxy Book Pro 360 is hands down the best. All of your major features and all that are just right there available to you. There is no, you know, peeking into sub menus and having these pop-up menus pop up, pop up, picking a selection and going back. You know right where you stand with any of them because the selections are all right there with your items selected, with the pin width too. That's so nice to have that right there right there alongside with the colors to be able to make all your brush adjustments right on the fly. I love that. You also have your quick settings right here. So if you want to change your page template, your background color, turn on the finger drawing that I was telling you about earlier to turn off, that's can all be done here. It's just very seamless. I also find the palm rejection to be great once you turn off palm rejection window settings. Let me show you where that is real quick. So you're going to go to start touchpad settings. Bluetooth and devices, and let's see, not touchpad, you want to go to pen and Windows Inc. And then you are going to go to additional pen settings, and you are going to pick ignore touch input when I'm using my pen. It's very important. Go ahead and make sure that is enabled. Um, once you do that, you'll be all set on this one. So let's go ahead and talk about the other application I wanted to talk about, and that is Pinup. So let me get those pulled up on both machines. All right, guys, so we have the Samsung Pinup application. This is a coloring sketchbook, just for mild artist type work or playing around. We have these both up on the screen. Um, right off the bat, I can tell you, I already prefer the interface for the Galaxy Book Pro 360 just because we have all our navigation shortcuts here to the left. 
You don't have that available here. Um, you just have your main headings down here on the bottom. I really like this interface a lot. Let's see. So here we're in the coloring section and we can get to that over here somewhere. Live drawings. I don't know, just for some reason, I just prefer this user interface. If we go here into one of these, continue coloring, you see we get all our pin information here off to the side. I don't know, for me, I just feel like with this being a wider aspect ratio, we have uh, just more, a better use of the screen real estate. You know, we can get in here pretty easy. So a couple things before I wrap up here. Do I think that the 120 hertz refresh rate makes a big difference compared to the 60 that you get on the, on the Galaxy Book Pro 360? And the answer is no, not really. Not when I'm writing or, I, I don't know, and I'm going along here. Feels pretty darn good. Let's let's get some of this stuff filled in. And you would think with this laptop being so big that it would be kind of unwieldy to, unwieldy to use in your lap, but I don't find it to be the case, especially with it being so light. I don't know. It's a, for me. I just prefer the experience. So I don't know. Get in here and have a good time. It's a lot of fun. Whoops, went a little too far. Press and hold the button for the eraser tool. All right, guys, so in my conclusion, Fold 3 is my least favorite by far. The Tab S7 Plus, the Galaxy Book Pro 360, very similar. One caveat too, I forgot to mention, let's mention this before I wrap up, is that you do have a few more tools with the Tab S7 Plus, like the magnifier tool is not available here. You have to use like the Windows magnifier. And it is kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and close out of this. One last thing, we'll go ahead and discard. And I think this is a bug with Windows 11. And that is if we pull up the quick, the quick tool by pressing the button while we're hovering, we can go right here and we can add shortcuts. And when you go to add this, you'll notice we have this animation that comes on the screen. The thing is, is it tells you to drag and drop items from your start menu over here to the right side. And in the animation, it is showing the Windows 10 animation. I can tell it's showing that start menu because it's off to the left on the screen. However, if you're buying this uh, laptop now here in 2022, this is going to come with Windows 11. And even if you bought a used one or whatever, it's going to auto it'll ask you to upgrade right off the bat. So with Windows 11, when I go to the start menu and I go to add something, let's grab this Samsung tool set here. We go to drag it down here. It looks like you can add it here. It has some move, but when I go to drag it, drag it there, it doesn't do anything. So just something to point out, looks like there's a little bug. But even after having said that, this is still my favorite, second favorite here, and then the Fold 3 last. All right guys, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. More to come, thanks for watching.